work that I presented today is um, part of an ongoing interest that I've had on uh, questions about Muslim identity, uh, Muslim politics, and um, wider politics of multiculturalism, race, identity, nation, and, and so on and so forth. Um, the work is about Kenan Malik's um, book, From Fatwa to Jihad, um, but that's in the context of a, a, a larger concern that I've had with freedom of speech controversies. Um, and Malik's book is one of the, the major sort of interventions in, uh, from a liberal point of view on freedom of speech controversies. And it's had an enormous impact because it's been a, one of the best-selling books about the, the Rushdie affair and its aftermath and so on. So that's, that's, that's really the context of, of where I'm coming from with this. Well, I'm a literary critic, so uh, although Malik's work is not a work of literature in the narrowest sense, um, and although these issues are often seen as sort of part of sociology or political philosophy or so on and so forth, I'm kind of interested in, in, in public rhetoric, in the, in the way in which people talk about issues, um, and it's specifically the way they use certain ways of talking about those issues, um, certain metaphors, certain ways of making it into stories or narratives that, that I think have really important effects, not least because they work unconsciously on, on people who listen to or read these, 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 uh, these works. Um, and it's a way of kind of organizing the material to make a kind of meaning that's socially effective. Uh, and I think that that's the value that, you know, as a literary critic, you, you, you're very attuned to looking for really, really at detail at language and the way that language is used. And, um, from my disciplinary background, I think there's a, a contribution you can make to public debate about, about the ways in which people talk about race, identity, culture, religion, and, and so on, just as opposed to what they talk about, you know. So that that's, is, is as important um, in its own way. The main questions that I'm asking are really a kind of critique of liberalism and liberal thought as a dominant way of kind of arguing against certain ways of being um, in contemporary Britain and contemporary Europe. Uh, they focus on Muslims, um, because my research is focusing on Muslim-related freedom of speech controversies. But also, they're, they're sort of more generalizable outside of the Muslim context, because you know these questions about uh, whether freedom of speech should be restricted for hate speech and all of those sorts of things are not really, are not just particular to, to, to Muslims and so on. So my concern is with, uh, with liberal thought there um, and a critique of liberal thought and you know, some of its fundamental premises, which I find to be uh, kind of almost culturally supremacist in its own way, are unaware of its own cultural dominance and unable to concede that there might be other ways of, of being in the world. Um, they sort of kind of make everybody subscribe to liberalism first before they actually uh, say, well, okay, then you can be different. So it's a kind of superficial difference that they kind of accommodate. Um, my main, main takeaway message is this, that the, the, the crisis of multiculturalism, if it can be called that, or the failure of multiculturalism or whatever, is a kind of rhetorical device. It's a way of expressing a certain anxiety within liberal thought about forms of politics, forms of identity, forms of uh, being, ways of being that are not particularly accommodatable or not particularly hospitable towards liberal perspectives. You know, uh, we need to think about these things at a deeper level because beyond the rhetoric of, uh, of this crisis of failure is, a, is actually uh, a kind of understanding that everybody else has to kind of subscribe to these dominant values before they can be considered as equal citizens or equal participants in a debate.